good morning good afternoon to all my friends my students and all the viewers there in youtube myself shyam banerji and i'm back with another economics class and another economics video i guess uh, you all know that the entire situation is a bit different now uh, so in this lockdown condition we all are there in our home i guess you all are there safe secure and be obeying our government's rules and all the uh, lockdown situation you are maintaining the social distancing and all and uh, you all have celebrated the last night the the respect that you had owed that you have given to all the entire country men to the doctors to all these administrative workers those are continuously helping us and at the same time i guess i'm expecting from you all that you all again had proved by lighting up the candles that we all are indians and we are fighting unitedly with our government right today our topic of discussion is bit different our topic of discussion as you can see here somehow i managed this particular board the last day was uh, sunday and somehow i managed from one of my students uh, there she lives just beside our colony so i went somehow in this uh, lockdown situation also somehow i managed to take this particular board from her so very much thank you shomali once again and uh, we are back somehow i managed to write the entire thing and i guess it's visible to all of you isn't it yes so let's begin with a short overview about the syllabus pattern about the entire syllabus of class 11 economics basically for cbsc now there are many students those who are thinking those who are coming from icc background up uh, to class 10 and are joining there in class 11 to different schools where you get cbsc there are many students those who are there in my school even i'm also a teacher of cbsc school only so my students are also there from class 10 they are coming to class 11 and even many of them are thinking to pursue with my subject economics for them before you take a subject basically my subject please do understand and get this particular overlook overview of the entire syllabus pattern there was a slight difference uh, there was a slight change in the syllabus which was there from the last year onwards so from the last year onwards our cbsc have decided to make a slight change in economic syllabus they had somehow taken the book that was been taught in class 11 to be taught there in 12 that is indian economic development and the book that was there taught in class 12 that was microeconomics to be there dragged in class 11 so this was a syllabus change that was done but the thing remained the same that was the marks division remained the same the total economics which was 100 marks for class 12 or for class 11 is segregated into two part one is 80 marks theory and i guess you can see here 20 marks is there from your project work so project your viva as well as your project 5 together consist of 20 marks and your entire 80 marks is there in your pen and paper test that is your theory now entire economics of class 11 cbsc is segregated now in two parts presently according to the syllabus of cbsc it is divided into microeconomics the first part and statistics the second part microeconomics is of 40 marks and statistics is again of 40 marks so equal division 80 marks of theory is divided into two parts 40 and 40 now just check out what are the things that you are going to learn in microeconomics in microeconomics the first thing that we are going to learn is a brief idea about the entire topic microeconomics what microeconomics refers to it's a very small and narrow concept of understanding economics there are different economic agents what we need to learn what we have already got a, a small brief idea about uh, that uh, the concept the economic activities or economic agents in class 9 and 10 the same thing we are going to learn here in introductory part there might be some difference in between microeconomics and macroeconomics there what are normative and positive uh, context of understanding a subject what to produce how to produce and for whom to produce the three economic problems there are many things that you are going to learn in introduction right after getting an introductory idea about microeconomics we will be jumping on to next topic that's consumer equilibrium and demand consumer equilibrium is a separate topic demand is a separate topic now consumer equilibrium is a concept regarding the behavior of a consumer who is wanting to make himself into an optimum situation and how that optimum situation can be accessed or how the optimum situation can be obtained is all about consumer equilibrium right 
Coming up to the next part, demand is a very interesting, is a very interesting topic and is a very uh, important core topic in economics. The next part after completing consumer equilibrium and demand, you have to scroll out to the next part. We are going to the next part, producer behavior and supply. Producer behavior as a consumer behavior, producer is another economic agent in our economics. And producer also to behave in some separate manner than that of a consumer. Its main objective is to get or to yield profit or by hook or by crook. Now how it is getting the profit and how it is ultimately keeping itself into or keeping himself, our producer is keeping himself into an optimum or uh, saturated situation is all about producer behavior and producer equilibrium. The next topic of discussion will be supply, which is a separate topic, which is just the opposite of that of demand. So the students also are having a very good idea about demand. They can make the just the opposite concept and go very easily with the chapter supply. So we are going to read demand and supply chapter separately. After completing the supply chapter, we are going to sell, the producer is going to sell their output there in the market, right? Thus, the next topic of discussion will be forms of market. Forms of market where you are going to read according to CBSE, we are having four types of market. One is a profit competition. Next one is a monopoly. Third one is the duopoly market. And the last one, uh, sorry, the monopolistic competition market. Another one is oligopoly. I talked about duopoly market. There are duopoly market, oligopoly market, oligopsony market, monopsony market, several other markets, but they are being taught in separate, uh, separate, uh, this courses like that uh, if you if you are a student of isc you, you may have this particular concept you may have monopsony you may have uh, uh, you may have that uh, oligopsony you may have even that particular duopoly market many other different forms of market are taught in this wb west bengal board syllabus as well as in ic isc syllabus right but if you are a student of cbsc you are having only four types of market remember that once again i'm repeating one is a perfect competition market second one is a monopoly market Third is a combination of perfect and monopoly. It's a monopolistic competition market, which is a hybrid market structure. And the last one is oligopoly market, where few number of big sellers are selling their commodity to many consumers. These are the four type, different types of market along with their characteristics, its features, its operations, as well as the examples. The best examples to illustrate them are being taught in this particular part, forms of market. Our last topic of discussion for microeconomics will be Price determination and under perfect competition. Please do uh, focus here. I am asking all my viewers to just focus here. Price determination under perfect competition. So four types of market we are going to learn, but we do need to understand how a producer under perfect competition recognizes and determines the equilibrium price. Some illustrations are there in this particular chapter, which is the most interesting out of all the chapters in economics. That's why it's given in the last. Before getting all the ideas of the previous chapter of microeconomics, you may proceed to the last one, right? I guess I'm so fast as because the video needs to be synchronized in a very short time. So please do focus here students, after reading the entire microeconomics and completing it by 40 marks, we have to proceed to the next part. So I'd like my viewers to focus here in this particular part. It's another interesting part of 40 marks, statistics. It's a very well-known part. Though it's considered as a part in mathematics, you have already read in maths, you already read mean, median, mode, you have done different type of gra uh, graphs, the frequency polygon, the histogram, the bar diagram, the ogive, right? The more than and the low, less than ogive. You made pi diagram, you made many forms of graphical representation whenever we talk about statistics. It's very well known to you. But this time in class 11, you will learn that statistics is a particular type of subject which is not only a part of mathematics. It's a particular subject which is even a very important yardstick for the economist as well. So every student's learning economics should have a very good grip and should have a very good idea about the elaborative illustrations of statistics. So basically statistics is a subject where we need to we need to get the collection of data we need we collect the data we analyze them with some economical knowledge so basically statistics is a part of economics as because all the economic applications can be best applied when you have a very good knowledge about statistical weapons right 
So now the statistics is also having 40 marks and most of the chapters are already done in your class 10. So nothing to worry. Statistics part is very, very easy. The students, those who are shivering there out there in my as viewers, that again, sir, again, maths mil gaya hum logo. Again, we need to go on with maths. We have taken economics as because we wanted to avoid maths. For them, nothing to worry here. Except maths also, if you get a very good glimpses and ideas about mean, median, mode, and if you have a very good knowledge about them, about the central tendency chapter, about the graphical representation, I guess most of the students like all this part in mathematics. I guess I'm right, right? So, for them, it's a very interesting part. The first topic of discussion will be introduction. They are also near about the same introduction what we have given in microeconomics, a bit different we will be giving here in statistics. Why statistics is a part of economics, when it is applied, how it is applied and also. The second part after completing the introductory part or introductory chapters with all of you, we will be proceeding to the next part that is a collection of data, organizing of data, presentation of data, analysis of data and interpretation. Basically, the statistics teachers are very well known with a particular common term. We get a short form of that, COPAI. C-O-P-A-I. Once again, I'm repeating. How? Look, if there is a trick. COPAI refers to, first, collection of data. You went to bazaar, you collected many short of data, right? You collected many of the vegetables in your jhula, that is in your big supper. You collected all those type of uh, vegetables from the market. That's what? Collection of data. You're collecting your data, your raw form of data, right? After collecting the raw form of data that is in a primary form, you what you do? You organize them. How you organize? After getting back home, you give the entire entire bucket or entire basket full of or entire bag full of vegetables with different variety of vegetables will be handed over to your mom, right? Mom is having different different shelf. Where? In the kitchen. And in different different shelf, what your mom do? Your mom segregate, separate, separate, so segregate all the potatoes in one shelf, all the chilies in another shelf, all the spinach in another shelf. Like this, all the vegetables, your mom do organize them separately. That's what we, the statistician, do. We also do organize the primary data in a very, very good form. Right? After organization, what comes is presentation. Yes. Now, what is presentation in our example of our mom and the son? What, what example we are going on? Suppose, in the night, your mom thought of preparing something for you. A particular dish. What your mom is doing? Mom is taking all the pills. Mom is actually taking all the peels out of the potato. What your mom is doing? After that, cutting it or making the slice, mom is presenting. Mom is actually doing a presentation. Now, after doing the presentation, what your mom will do? After a COP, what comes? COP. First one is collection of data. Second one is presentation of data. Sorry, uh, yes, organization of data, sorry. The third one is presentation of data. After your mom have chopped all those potatoes, have taken some slice of uh, chilies, had taken some onions and had cut that into slices. After that, what your mom is going to do? Mom is going to prepare the dish. Mom is going to make all the entire dish, put all those things in the particular karai. And after that, what your mom is going to do? Mom is going to cook the particular dish for you. That is the thing what economic students do. They analyze the entire data. And after doing an analysis, what your mom told is from the next day, please don't go in the market. I'm very, very much thankful to you. Please from tomorrow, don't go to the market. I'm going to send your father there in the market. What your mom is doing? Mom is ultimately giving a conclusion. That conclusion in economics and in statistics refers to as interpretation of data. So we are having five concepts. One is collection of primary data. Second one is organizing them, classifying them in a very good manner. After that, presenting them in front of the particular, uh, in front of all the individuals or in front of the government. It might be in front of your entrepreneur. You are presenting the data. After presenting what you do, you make an economic analysis of the data. And after doing an analysis, what you do ultimately, you prescribe some prescription. You do make a conclusion or you come to the conclusion. That's what is known as interpretation of data. So this is the OPI concept that we are going to learn in the second chapter, collection, organization and presentation of data. That's why there is a particular type of uh, career, job career. Many of my friends are also doing that. Economic analyst. 
the economic analysts do have a very strong grip about statistics. They have a good knowledge about statistics as well as a good knowledge about economics. They make an economic analysis with the help of the subject statistics, right? After completing this part, we are coming to the third chapter. That statistical tools and interpretation, what we are up to, what I told you the last part, C, O, P is done. C is done, collection, O is done, organization, P is done previously also, presentation. The last chapter talks about A and I, analysis and interpretation.